Governments around the world have tried to suppress the sale of human organs for transplants. But desperate recipients, cash-strapped donors and international crime syndicates have kept this illegal multi-million dollar industry going. So who are the doctors and patients willing to break the law? We sent Juliana Rufus in search of the organ traders. Turkey, 27th of April, 2007. The police raid a private hospital in Istanbul. Several people are injured in a shootout with armed robbers. When the police search the building, they discover a secret operating theater. Medical staff caught red-handed performing two illegal kidney transplants are detained. It's the fourth time that Dr. Yusuf Sonne, the main surgeon and owner of the clinic, is getting arrested. He claims to have carried out 4,000 kidney transplant operations, and since their legality is being questioned, the Turkish media calls him Dr. Frankenstein. The recipients of the kidneys are South African and an Israeli male. Both men paid over 200,000 US dollars in order to obtain kidneys, one of them from an Israeli Arab girl. It is the fact that the organs were sold for money which makes these transplants illegal. In May 2012, this raid on Sonmez clinic resulted in a 10-year prison sentence. But Dr. Sonmez continues to evade arrest. Most governments around the world have banned the sale of organs because they fear the exploitation of poor and vulnerable people. But an estimated 8,000 kidneys are still transplanted illegally every year by brokers and surgeons prepared to break the law. We want to find out why it is so difficult to fight illegal organ transplants and why brokers, and especially surgeons, keep slipping the law. To get an insight into Dr. Sonmez's international black market kidney trade, we are flying to Israel. In the Turkish court documents relating to the raid on Dr. Sonmez's clinic, we have found the name of the Israeli man who was discovered by the police. This is the neighborhood of Caesarea, one of the most upmarket neighborhoods in Israel. This is where Zef Victor lives, the man who received the kidney from the girl in the 2007 transplant. Turkish prosecutors charged Zef Victor with the crime of purchasing a kidney, but he managed to avoid the trial by fleeing the country. Here in Israel, he has never been prosecuted because the illegal operation took place abroad. Before he became ill, Zef Victor was a successful entrepreneur who ran companies around the world. He's the only human being ever to have received three transplants, kidney, lung and heart. Can you tell us how you received your kidney? It put aside James Bond because I went into illegal things. Otherwise, I'll be dead. And he went and found out who are the dealers. Indeed, they took to Turkey. They bring you to a special clinic. And then they make the operation. It's normally successful. All of a sudden, I'm awake. And I'm bleeding and bleeding, and the, the girl is bleeding. The donor girl? Yeah. So they started shouting. Somebody, I don't know who, till today, came and gave us an uh, injection. And I didn't know much more than that, to be honest, at that time. You say you received your kidney from a girl. Do you know she what happened to her? She received her money, and we disconnected our relations. She is only living far away from here, by the way. 20 miles. How uh, much money did she receive? I don't know, but I assume about $28,000. I assume. Uh, which is a nice amount for her, because she's from a very poor Arab family. Well, why did you cut relations? Because I kidney? would feel that I owe her my life, in a way. And people like her brothers, and sisters. These families are 15, 16 kids. Uh, 
will start relations with me that will be money relations, which means suck for me in a match. Hey, look, we saved uh, your life. Uh, you are a big millionaire, but without us, you would be nothing, and, you know. I, I wanted to avoid this. But what happens after the operation is of crucial importance. Without proper aftercare, organ donors can end up with serious health problems, something they're rarely told about in advance. It is a reason why the World Health Organization has banned organ trade for money. We're now looking for the girl whose kidney was given to Zev Viktor, and we've got her name and her hometown from the Turkish court documents. The trouble is, she belongs to a 20,000 strong Arab Israeli clan, so it's not going to be easy to find her. And we've made contact with a local doctor who's promised to help us. Mm. Yes, nice to meet you. Mm. Mm. As the family's doctor, Dr. Ziad has known the girl since she was a child. Hers is a tragic story, he says. Born into a poor family and raised with little education, she fell pregnant after an affair with a factory worker. He took her as a second wife and then forced the girl to sell a kidney so that he could pay off his debt. This is the home, that you. Okay. The mother. How did you meet the mother? She's my neighbor. Mm. I know her. Dr. Ziad knows that the girl has left town, but he calls the family to see if we can meet them instead. So, have you got any idea how the people who took the girl to Istanbul, how they made contact the with first, the husband? The, the first uh, step is the publication in journal. We need a donor for... Uh, kidney, uh, blood type uh, A. Okay. Call this number. The girl's family wants to talk to us first without cameras. So we've just managed to meet with the girl's mother and her sisters, and the story that is emerging is actually a really miserable one. After the girl returned from Turkey, where she had her kidney extracted, her husband left her and went back to his first wife, and she then went to Haifa, where she's now working in prostitution. Now, the family, the mother and the sisters, are point-blank refusing to give us an interview because some of the younger sisters are still unmarried, and if this whole story comes out, they will never find a husband. To further reassure them, we have also promised we would not disclose their names. So you're the doctor for this entire community. Is this the only case that you've heard, or are you aware of others? Uh, no, I know another cases. Uh, I know a lot of cases that are related to the drugs. The drugs are there, the drugs are there, and we need Israel frequently features in organ trafficking news. For cultural reasons, the demand for kidneys here is bigger than elsewhere. Many religious Jews don't like to donate organs, and Israeli hospitals have long transplant waiting lists. Over the past years, Dr. Sonmez has developed a network of Israeli clients and collaborators. This is the man who assisted him as an international broker. In fact, he's also the one who secured the Arab girl's kidney for Zev Vigdor. He's an Israeli citizen by the name of Moshe Harel, who was arrested here in Tel Aviv earlier this year when the police busted an illegal organ trade network. But to everybody's great surprise, he was released shortly later on bail. We requested an interview with the Israeli authorities, but they declined. But we heard speculations that Moshe Harel now works with the authorities, and we decided to try and find him at his address just outside Tel Aviv. So he's number 17, and that's the Hebrew writing for Harel, so we know he's here. One of the neighbors has just let us into the building, so we'll see if we can knock his door and see if he's in. Hello. 
It looks like there is a surveillance camera, so he's either genuinely not in, or he can see us from the inside, in which case he's not going to open the door. One of the reasons why Israeli authorities may have been so reluctant to curb illegal transplants is the fact that the kidney trade is saving the lives of Israel's political and economic elite. That night, we arranged to meet a prominent Israeli lawyer who had managed to get Moshe Harel off the hook in a previous arrest. Mordecai Zwivin advises a number of organ brokers about where in the world they can perform transplants without breaking the law. He says not everyone condemns them. Most of them didn't do something uh, unlegal in Israel. People who are dealing with it call it doctors. Uh, from one side, they are devils. From the other hand, they are angels. They just save people. From the other hand, they will kill people if they don't pay them enough money. Some brokers lie to the people who sell it. They are talking to young boys, to teenagers. They are telling them that there is no dangerous thing to stay with one kidney, even though it might be true, but this is, of course, not an excuse. I mean, uh, I wouldn't call them murders, because they are not, but they are very, very bad people, people. They are your clients. I'm telling you, they are devils and they are angels. They save life of people. Back on the trail of Dr. Sonmez, we head on to Kosovo, where he has been making headlines in a new case. After the closure of his clinic in Turkey, Sonmez had simply moved his operations to Pristina, where prosecutors allege he carried out 25 illegal transplants in this unassuming house, the Medicus Clinic. But in November 2008, a year and a half after the raid in Turkey, authorities began to close in on Dr. Sonmez once more. A 24-year-old Turkish man by the name of Yilmaz Altun collapsed at Pristina Airport when leaving the country. When the police began to question Yilmaz Altun, they were in for a surprise. The young man revealed a wound across his stomach where his kidney had just been removed. Further investigations revealed that the recipient of the kidney was yet again an Israeli male. That night, the police raided the Medicus Clinic on suspicion of organ trafficking. All patients and several local doctors were arrested, but as if by magic, Dr. Sonmez had managed to leave the country and escape back to Turkey. It wasn't until the European Union rule of law arrived in Kosovo in 2009 that the Medicus case came to attention once more. With Ulex came prosecutor Jonathan Vattel, who revisited the files and a year and a half later issued a damning indictment. He called for Dr. Yusuf Sonmez, Moshe Harel, and a number of locals to face court on the following charges. Trafficking in persons, organized crime, unlawful exercise or medical activity, and abusing official position or authority. Given the difficulty previous prosecutions had faced, it was clear that Vattel was prepared to take a gamble. To win this case, he must prove not only the kidney donors received money, but also that the doctors knew about it. Ulex are incredibly sensitive about any interview with prosecutor Rattel, but after weeks of negotiations, they have finally given us permission to ask a few pre-arranged questions. This is an interview closely monitored by Rattel's superiors, who are anxious about the outcome of his four-year investigation. Prosecutor Mattel, would it be correct if I paraphrase and say that donors were tricked into giving their organs um, by being offered money and potentially being lied to about the consequences? The offense was committed one of two ways, either through a misrepresentation or a form of coercion. I, I can't discuss the evidence, obviously, and uh, the indictment speaks for itself. I read the indictment. There was mention of a broker. There was mention of a doctor. Um, th there was clearly role distribution. Well, I can talk about 
two individuals who at this present time uh, are fugitives from justice, uh, one of which is Dr. Yusuf Samnez. That individual is a, a Turkish national and we are actively looking for that person. The other person is an Israeli national. That person is Moshe Harel and we're actively seeking the arrest of that individual. Uh, both of which are the subjects of Interpol red notices. Can you also tell me something about the accused here in Kosovo? I, I can't really discuss the ex exact uh, defendants. There are uh, seven persons charged, uh, five of which are medical experts, uh, one of which is, uh, as the indictment discloses, a manager of the clinic, and the uh, seventh person is uh, a past official of the Ministry of Health, but beyond that I really can't discuss that. With the prosecution so tight-lipped, it is time to see if we can talk to the defendants. And here we are in luck. Luti Davici, co-owner of the Medicus Clinic, has agreed to talk to us. It was Davici who invited Dr. Sonmus to work here until the clinic's closure. Dr. Davici brought papers from the Ministry of Health to shed doubt on the prosecution's claim that his clinic wasn't legal, including a license for Dr. Sonmez. His defense is one used by doctors around the world. The prosecution says they have a record of emails that money was transferred, that Ilman Altun received money and that his flight was paid for by an organ broker. For us, the clinic is not common to see the clinic or the medical institution, but the rest is the medical clinic. So, really, you are saying you had no idea what went on in your clinic? One day, the tenant, the new item, me, was born not transplanted. Devishi's lawyer, Lynn Slappengren, takes the point even further. I accept his explanation that his job was not to supervise Dr. Sanmez any more than he supervises any of the other medical doctors who do their professional medical work at the clinic. Even if it is your clinic and you run it? There's a difference between owning a building and uh, uh, managing the uh, finances of the building, buying equipment and so forth, and supervising the work of a professional. And Dr. Sanmez had his work, and Dr. Devici did not go grilling Dr. Sanmez, what are you doing, what kind of surgeries are you doing, uh, and, and so forth. Our final attempt to trace Dr. Sanmez is taking us back to Istanbul. Here, a Turkish prosecutor has opened a case based on evidence received from Kosovo. But in May this year, the Medicus trial collided with the old case against Sanmez. The Turkish judges in the 2007 case involving the raid on Dr. Sonmez's clinic here reached a verdict and sentenced him to 10 years imprisonment. But when the police arrived to arrest him, he was nowhere to be found. Dr. Sonmez has since been in hiding, so we speak to his defense lawyer instead. I would like to say that the ruling given by the Turkish court is in our opinion, is not legal, is against the law, because the Turkish court did not accept our claims regarding the witnesses, the donors and the recipients. So the Turkish court did not invite these people to the court and listen. Are you saying that both the donors and the recipients should have been present yes, to I'm make this case valid, in your opinion? Of course. Of course, no doubt. There is no doubt. So Forlu demands the same for the Medicus case, but since donors and recipients can also be charged with organ sale, few of them come forward as witnesses. 
do you think if the Turkish authorities knew where Dr. Sonmez is, they would ask for extradition back to Turkey? Yes, yeah, there is a risk. But I don't know where he is. And according to law, if I knew, if I had known, I wasn't, I'm not obliged to tell where he is. We decide to have a look at Dr. Sonmez's villa in a rich Istanbul neighborhood. Suddenly, some people arrive. I, we're actually wondering, is, is this the home of Dr. Sonmez? <laughs> we, we're just um, wondering, are, are, are you a friend of his or? Uh, I am his mother. Oh, you're the mother of Dr. Yeah, yeah. Sonmez. Okay, I see. Do you know where we may find him? He's on a journey. But he's still in Turkey or not? Yes, speak to him. Okay, hi. <laughs> Are you the wife of Dr. Sonmez? Yes. Yeah, hi, I'm Juliana. And then she let something slip. Do you know how we can find him? Right mm. now he's in Italy. Please, yes. uh, we don't want to, to, to have any yeah. right now. No? No. All it had okay. taken was a trip to his house to start locating him. Dr. Sonmez is not the only person who's gone into hiding. To the great detriment of the prosecutors in Kosovo and Istanbul, Yilmaz Altu, a Turkish man who collapsed at Pristina Airport, a key witness against Dr. Sonmez, has also disappeared. According to court documents, Altun is from the town of Samsun, and we've located his brother who has agreed to speak to us on condition that we hide his identity. He tells us Altun had fallen in with the dodgy crowd. So you heard from your brother five, six months ago, and you know he's pretty well, but you haven't heard from the authorities since 2008. He told us that's right, and that he doesn't have much contact with his brother, but knows he's okay. So does he think it's actually possible to find Yilmaz via his friends here in Samsung? He thinks it needs some research, but it's possible. After our last two encounters, we're beginning to wonder just how committed Turkish authorities are to resolving these cases. To find answers, we have arranged to meet the state prosecutor for the Medicus case, and I ask him if he thinks enough effort has been made to find Yilmaz Altun. Sürecinde Yilmaz Altun'un dediğim gibi birden fazla adresini bulduk. Kaç ay evvel buradaydı ama şimdi nereye taşındığını bilmiyoruz. Bu aradığımız kişi şüpheli ya da yargılama aşamasındaki adıyla sanık olsa onu onun hakkında yakalama kararı çıkartabilirsiniz. Bu kişiye mağdur sıfatı ya da şikayetçi sıfatı verdiğiniz zaman bu şekilde ara, aratamazsınız. Dr. Sonmez's wife tells us that he's in Italy. Clearly his lawyer and his wife are regularly in contact with Dr. Sonmez. Can you not tap his phone, locate him and ask for example for an extradition from Italy? tutuklanmadı. E, tutuklanmayan da yine tutuklanmadı ama ikinci kere sevk ettiğimizde de adli kontrol e, kararı verildi. Yani tutuklamadan bir alt derece. Neden tutuklanmadı diye sorarsanız da o yani mahkemelerin ve yargıçların yetkisi ve inisiyatifi dahilinde alınan kararlar. İşte onu eleştirmek bana düşmez. It's tough for prosecutors to build cases that stand up in court. Organized crime has been more efficient than law enforcement when it comes to working in a globalized world with multiple jurisdictions. Back in Kosovo, Prosecutor Vatel is preparing to hear the judgment in the Medicus case, but the main accused, Dr. Sonmez and Moshe Harel, are well out of his reach. Without more real collaboration between jurisdictions, traffickers will continue to move around the world in search of new legal loopholes and higher profits. <laughs>